Got my original Raspberry Pi here that I really haven't done anything with. But I think I'm going to turn this into an own cloud server from my cell phone and sharing files with my friends. Computers, gaming, retro gear, devices, tech To get this started, we need to prepare the SD card that's going to go into this Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and prepare the SD card. We'll see you on the desktop. All right, first off, we need to make the image on the disk. We've got this cool little website here that I discovered, the Minimal Raspbian image for Raspberry Pi. And from this website, you go ahead and download it link is in the description and when you download it you go ahead and extract the uh, tar.gz file and you will get an image for this example I'm gonna go ahead and use gnome disks to burn my image to my 32 gigabyte um, SSD card so what we're gonna do is go ahead click on this here and restore disk image now we're gonna go ahead and select our image click open and start restoring well, we're going to wait for this to go ahead and image the SD card. And when it's done, we're going to go ahead and put it into the Raspberry Pi and boot this sucker up. Now that it's all done, let's go ahead and get this hooked up and get her booted. All right, here we go. Plugging her in. Looks like we're go. Looks like we are go. All right, now that we've had a successful boot, we can now resize the partition. For this tool, I'm going to go ahead and use my G-Part. And what we need to do is expand this partition. So let's go ahead and change the size of this. Meow. Just like that. Click the resize button. Get the little check mark. It's gonna say blah, blah, blah. Just click apply. And it's gonna do this for about, not too long. It doesn't take very long. Start installing our goodies. After we resize the partition, we are now getting an error that it failed to do a file system check. So, what we're going to do is go ahead and enter the root password and do a file system check. And now, it's going to go ahead and fix our file system. And when it's done here, we should be able to reboot and be all ready to go. We just hit enter and it's reboot time. We are here, now it's time to SSH into it and do all of our work from there. We're ready to SSH into it. The default password is Raspberry. Uh, the first thing we need to do is start updating the system. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and perform the full system upgrade. We're going to go ahead and let this reboot. And fingers crossed, everything boots up okay after such a big update like that. And looks like over on the TV, it's booting. It's all, of course, uh, sudo because it's not in there. Uh, nano, git, and dialog, and htop. There is a link in the description that will lead to the own cloud pi uh, GitHub script, um, and he's got pretty much some detailed instructions on how to do this, so this should be pretty easy. It's just going to be a copy and paste scenario. Just so paste this in here, and it's going to go ahead and download that from git, cd into own pi. Put that in there. Go ahead and execute the script like that. Now, in his, he has a C chmod the uh, uh, file, but in testing, I didn't need to do that. So, first of all, what we need to do is set our server URL. So, we go ahead and enter that, which is 192.168.0.105. Enter. I'm going to do new installation Apache base because I have experience in Apache and I kind of know what to expect with it. And of course from here, it's going to do everything automatically for you. It is now going to create our self-signed certificate. It's going to ask for some information, of course, from us, and we'll be able to work with that. All right, here it's going to ask you some questions. Go ahead and fill out the questions, and when you're done, you're good to go. Here, as you can see, it is now downloading the latest version of OwnCloud. Looks like we're all done. So with this part, we just go ahead and hit enter, and it's going to go ahead and reboot the Pi. 
Of course, it goes to the menu for some weird reason, but <laughs> as you can see there, <clears throat> it just rebooted it. Time to do a little changes to kind of configure this bad boy up. First thing we need to do is uh, change directories here real quick. Uh, I think it's in var www. Yep. Okay. First thing we're going to do is uh, nano the index HTML. And in here, we're just going to wipe everything out. Now that that's pasted in there, let's go ahead and control X and get out of here and save it. What that's going to do is redirect it so when we go to the main IP address, we don't have to put in the slash own cloud. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to CD into our um, it's own cloud. Yep. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and nano and create a file called HT access this is one of those things the script did not put this in here so if you what you need to do is download the own cloud zip file and open up the HD access file and go ahead and just copy all that information and paste it in such as so okay now we should be able to enter our local IP address of the Raspberry Pi which is 192 168.0.105. Boom. And now it brings us to the initial setup page where you're going to um, create your admin username and a password. When you're done with that, go ahead and click on Finish Setup. All right, there we go. We are all set up. Go ahead and just click off of this. It comes with some junk that you really don't need. You can just go ahead, you know, and delete that it can be a little laggy compared to when I run this on like DigitalOcean but what I want to do is have something a little bit more private that I can control As you can see the lag there what I mean about the thumbnails showing up see how they take their time see how much space all this took up about 1.1 gigabytes and I still have 27 gigabytes free on the SD card so for my 8 gigabyte phone I think this is gonna be more than enough or what I need to do. Now I want to get this set up in a more permanent location like right down here. Got the Ethernet everything ready to go so let's get her plugged in into her new location where it'll be my permanent own cloud. It's all set up and ready to go. Now let's get her connected to my celly phone. And for this phone demonstration I'm going to use Folder Sync. In Folder Sync here I'm going to go ahead and go to my accounts add account. Now for own cloud you want to use web DAV. Let's give it a name. Head and input our local IP address. Okay we got our uh, IP address in there and for start folder we're gonna enter this and this is what we've entered for the start folder. We choose allow self-signed certificate and now we enter our username and password. And Now that we're done we can test the connection. We're all good to go. Now we go to folder pairs and we're going to add a folder. For the name, we're going to call this phone. Now we select our account. We're going to choose our remote folder to put our files. I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call this folder phone. Now we go into the phone folder and select. We get to choose the folder on our phone. For this one, I'm going to choose my picture directory. Okay, got my picture directory selected. Let's go ahead and put her in. We want sync type to be remote folder schedule it for daily and the rest of it we're all good to go now we click save as you can see here we're officially now syncing as you can see there there's a new folder and now it's downloading all the pictures from my phone and if all I need to do is say "Ooh, look at that I want to share this with somebody I hope you have enjoyed watching me make this Raspberry Pi home cloud server I've got a way to back up my files and share with friends. So it's time for me to close this video. This is Anthony from Anthware, and this time and every time on, folks, keep on clicking.